everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This one is on a young man who was brutally murdered in his car while he was outside a motorcycle shop in Florida on June 18th, 2018. This young man, who is a rapper, was born on January 23rd, 1998 making him barely an adult at the time of his murder. And I'm talking about the late rapper XXX Tentacion. I'm gonna call him X, that's gonna be my nickname for him throughout this reading. So I started to look into his astrological chart. I wanted to see his natal chart. I don't have his time of birth, but I noticed immediately that his moon and Sagittarius, and they're always quirky, always free thinking, you can never contain them. Like even if he were to live to be 40, 50, 60, he probably would be more of a loner than he would be connected to anyone. He's one of those perpetual bachelors, perpetual Peter Pans. Could have been quite immature as well. And remember, the moon reflects the mother, the, the maternal influence on this child. And the same would have been for this mother of his. She would have been somebody who was maybe what people would have considered immature, if not only by age, but her actions and in the way that she raised this child. However, there was another caveat to the moon conjunct Pluto within one degree. Moon conjunct Pluto basically combust. Conjunction means married, combust means on top of each other. So the two energies are expressive. So the moon actually moves in accordance with the planet of Pluto. Now the planet Pluto is a planet of extremes. When, you, when it's tied to the moon, which is our emotions, it will bring you to your knees a thousand times over. You will be like a happy, happy person one minute and literally flip a switch and want to kill yourself, which got me to thinking. I also noticed that he had Mars conjunct Jupiter in his chart, which is hugely expansive to the people that have it and it gives them a worldwide appeal due to the knowledge in their own lives. But what was more interesting about the whole thing was Saturn in Aries. Why was this interesting? As soon as I started to look at that, he flashed me right back into past lives and this was fascinating to me. Past lives in Egypt and Rome where he was in mortal battle with somebody that was currently in his present life. And I asked him, because he was surprised that he died again because he died early in that life too and he wasn't supposed to exit this life that early. That actually, it was murder, so this is not by his own choice. And he really wasn't supposed to leave the planet that early. Like literally, this was not karma. This was a choice made by people around him for their own personal greed. And I'm not talking about the two that murdered him, okay? So I'm not talking about that. I go all the way back all the way back to these past lifetimes. And I'm watching him in the most recent lifetime. I don't know if it's the Egyptian one or the Roman one that looks the same to me, but I, I wanna make it distinguish between the two lifetimes, okay? So he's had at least two other lifetimes, including this lifetime, where his own reckless actions, if not his own choices, have in, pushed him out of his life early, never living really past the age of 30, under the age of 30, this life inclusive in that group. Here's what's interesting. Most recent past lifetime was considered suicide. It was considered suicide because he was tricked, he found out after, but tricked into believing that he could exit that lifetime by his own choices and that he was a... He's showing me somebody in prayer in those lifetimes. He is also a warrior in combat. That's what all the tattoos on his face were about. They were from the Egyptian lifetime where he was actually pulling in that energy. I don't know if his personality have had cognitive memory of that or if he just subconsciously felt drawn to it, but that's what it was about. The thing on his forehead here was actually to let you know that he had third eye sight and had illuminated himself in this life in a very rough way to open that third eye. This was representative of it. And he was actually marking himself from that past lifetime where he did battle, which was fascinating. All right, so who's he doing battle with? I will tell you that in a second. But what he's showing me is, when I'm asking him, what do you mean you left the past life early? He's showing me his fingertips like this. And as he goes like this, fire comes off his fingertips, okay? Like, um, like you probably see in cartoons or fiction movies, since we don't go around letting fire go off our fingertips. He's showing me, he's commanding and he's 
throwing fire through his body. So his body is doing this. He's showing me, and it's weird because he moves between dimensions is what he tells me. This is what he tells me, he's pretty slick. He tells me he moves between dimensions. So he goes between them. He doesn't live where I live. He doesn't live where we live. He moves through these different, these different universes, these different worlds. It's a combination of dimensional travel and time travel, all right? So this is what he's telling me. Most recent past life, he kind of try, tried to get through a portal. He's showing me a portal. Now, what is a portal? The best way that I can explain it is, and I'm sure you've seen it on haunted house movies and things like this, where there will be an energy center that is like an energetic door to the other side or another dimension. This is actually what I believe happens when we're talking about aliens and space travel. I believe it's actually dimensional. In other words, our energy fields open up, kind of like a chakra in the body. So we have chakras, everybody knows what the chakras are. The crown chakra, the third eye, the throat chakra, the heart chakra, up and down, everywhere, solar plexus, root chakra, asacral, etc. So we know about chakras and they are described to us as whirling energy centers that go in a whirling circle and continue to build or to get stagnant or build or get stagnant, okay, depending on what's going on in our lives. Well, the earth is full of these chakras or portals. I'm calling them portals because there are groups of people that exit and enter in and out of them. This is basically when we're talking about, for example, um, well, I'll describe something on a personal level. When my father-in-law passed away many, many years ago, I actually saw him walking crossing over in front of me in my living room. He had no notice of me, but I was able to see through a veil and see him walking across and out of his body, even though they were having the funeral for him at the time. So he continued on, but it was like he was unaware of me and I caught a glimpse of him. This is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being able to move through energies and move through experiences through doors and through walls. The earth is full of these portals. When you hear of areas energetically like Sedona, Arizona being basically a vortex, we're talking about a portal where energy comes in and out, an earth bound chakra. Okay. So the earth, the dimension, the chakra energy goes in and out like this. This is what we're talking about. This young man in his most recent past life, and I'm seeing him, he is wearing armor in one of the lifetimes. And in the other one, the fire shoots off his hands. Okay, so there's fire shooting off his hands. And he's telling me I'm a magician and I can make these things happen. And I've learned how to move my energy. I've learned how to take my energy and move it to where I need it to be. He shows me the breastplates and he's a warrior and he puts a staff in the ground. This is the Roman lifetime I believe I'm seeing. And he shows me and he's looking at somebody and he's looking at them and they are in, and I'm going to use the word again, mortal combat. They are in mortal combat, these two. They are looking at each other. Now, this person shows up as a man to me as I'm looking at him as though I'm looking through his eyes at them. And then she shapeshifts into his mother in this life. He actually tells me that he was claimed into this life, claimed by her to continue their battle from that lifetime because he took off in that lifetime. He actually ended up dying. And what he's telling me is he was under the impression that he could travel through a portal. I'm talking the last lifetime, not this lifetime. I think he may have been tricked into that again, but not through his own actions. That lifetime was through his own actions because he shows me running on the ground, the way that you run on the earth on the ground, okay, the actual ground. He's showing me running on the ground and he's showing me jumping and actually saying an incantation as he jumps to get through, okay, to get through and he ends up dead. Then he shows me, I'm talking past life, not this. Then he shows me as he steps out of his body and realizes immediately there's an energy that basically... um how he's describing it to me is there's a magnet that basically pulls him up like this and pulls him over here out of his own way for some reason. And he is suspended in action. And then he shows me something that where he is shut down and he basically sleeps. 
So he is not aware of what's going on around him. And again, I'm talking past life, not this one. I'm getting to this one or this in between. Anyway, he shuts down in that past life as he is shut down, or maybe it's like being put into an induced sleep in the hospital where they give you meds and you're asleep or a coma. And you're like, okay, somebody gave it to you. So you're not really in a coma, but, but you still are in a coma. He's showing me this on the other side. And when he wakes up, he basically, all he can remember is going into the birth experience in this life. And then he is who he is now to his mother, his mother, the mortal enemy from the past life. This is still going on. Now, do I know if they knew that when he was a baby and he was two months old? Probably not because I'm trying to think back. I don't remember. He's showing me remembering up until the birth process, like meaning being pushed out literally, and then I'm going blank on the memory. Now, this has a lot to do, what he tells me, a lot to do with his expression on the earth, a lot, because his expression was the only way he knew how to say that he was dissatisfied, tricked, held hostage in this life, bullshit held hostage in this life, unable to walk away, bound, claimed, tricked, stolen, hijacked, hidden. These are words he's saying in this lifetime. So when he was born, what they call his mental illness or his emotional um, state emo, okay? Because he was rap, hip hop, emo, rock. I'm sure he did everything. Okay. I'm sure he took it and put his own spin on it. So call it what you want. But his depressive episodes were because he could not get the chains off his arms. He's bound when he was asleep on the other side, put into a coma energetically, I guess is how we want to say it. And he's saying this because he was doing things that he shouldn't have been doing. He was jumping. He was sidewinding through lifetimes like a snake sidewinding like this, trying to avoid what was happening there. And it happened here. You can't avoid, but you can shift your energy and your power so that you don't stay stuck repeating, repeating, repeating. That lifetime, he took it upon himself to sidewind out of it, use a portal and jump in basically what he's showing me into another dimension, basically time travel, but not quite because I don't think he meant to show up here because he was immediately hijacked and held. So his energy was shut down so that, and this is what he's telling me, because I'm asking, was your energy shut down to help your soul. Sometimes people will die of like drug overdoses or tremendous trauma and they will have issues happen to them that are so traumatic that the, the soul body has to be shut down on the other side as in recalibrated back to uh, um, the level that it was at before it was traumatized. And that can be one reason to shut a body down, but he's saying no, the reason was all of that domestic violence, that choking, that, that hatred of women is coming from the past lifetime where he was hijacked through misinformation, his own actions, choices, but then held in an energetic prison, I guess, or psych ward on the other side. I'm trying to think of it. Like it's probably like a psych ward, right? So held energetically on the other side and basically hijacked into this lifetime, his energy is powerful and his energy is strong. And I'm getting a piercing thing through my ear right now. Um, they do that. Sometimes the other side doesn't like you talking and they fuck with you. They give you fears and they make you, you know, distracted. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to keep talking. So stop that. Okay. So what I'm seeing is when he came into this life as his mother's son, there was immediate recognition, probably around the age of five, that this was not going to be what he thought. So a lot of his music is structured on the fact that he was held hostage on the other side, hijacked into this life, um, claimed, brought down here against what he was trying to complete in the past life. He was given a choice in this life though, his goal in this life to free himself from bondage Okay, but he's speaking now, so he's not in bondage because he didn't kill himself this time. This was not his actions this time. He wasn't trying to escape it. He stood sturdy and, 
and firm. So it's, 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 um, God, it's so Roman. It's so, it's so, it's so, um, oh my God. It's just so, this is theatrical too. It's very theatrical because his one goal in this life was to remain here until he hit his forties and fifties and he was removed, thus locking his fate in to where he will have to come back again. And these energy vampires that harness his energy can use him again in another life because he didn't make it past this one in order to get out of the bondage. You know what this reminds me of? Oh my God. Okay. So there's people that kidnap humans, people across the border, coyotes, and you pay them. Okay. Say you pay them $10,000 to get you to go wherever it is you're going and you're locked in a box, a crate or whatever. And then you step out in your different country destination. You step out there and when you get out, you're like, I'm free. I can work. I can find a lover. I can have kids. I can do whatever. And then the coyote comes up and says, oh, you're not free because we told you, you can't work without paying back what you owe. It's a form of bullying. It's a form of slavery. He's talking about, X is talking about being enslaved energetically, spiritually because of his powers being harnessed. This was why he was so depressed on the side. This is the emo part of his personality. He couldn't bear that he was here. He was trying to speak and talk about it. He's not the one that did the deed. He was basically claimed out of his, he was claimed to be something other than what he was by his mother. She's orchestrating behind the scenes. She's this man's master, mortal enemy, past life. This is why he didn't like women. Really deep down he did, but he did not. So much. Now this is what I'm hearing too. He couldn't really understand why he didn't have a mom like other moms, though he loved his mom. He didn't really understand it, okay, with her behaviors, which he doesn't really get into, but they're questionable, whatever. She had her issues. She did her mom thing, right? Whatever. But what he talks about, what he talks about is the fact that their relationship was um, extremely codependent, disassociated. He wanted her to see him and approve of him as he was. She abandoned him, according to him. His grandma raised him. He was abandoned, which set him up in such a way on an emotional level in this life. Because remember, you've got the undercurrent going on subconsciously, but do you really remember what happened in the past life? You may get glimpses of it here and there. Some people, not everybody, but he's so trying to get this woman's attention and she's so busy being whatever over here herself that he is pushed over here to the grandmother and then he is put in the perfect storm that will refocus his energy the way that they want it to, to make him into that warrior for their energy, not what he wanted to be. He struggled. So there were two sides to him. I see one side, I see another side. So which side did we get? This is part of what the problem was with him. This is part of his emotional nature. This was his rage. This was the key. Now with that Saturn in Aries, he had to learn how to handle that anger in this life. And he had to learn how to step away from his mother's manipulative control, which is what he was doing when he was murdered. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised, I'm not gonna say it here, if those <sighs> murderers, hijackers, stealers were not orchestrated energetically from behind the scenes, we'll say black magic, by his mortal, mortal enemy. I'm seeing this unfold in front of me. This is how he's describing it to me. So I'm giving it to you the way that I see it. What he's saying is because of his mother's screwed up behavior when he was younger and his own reactions to it, violence, okay? This is what he had to learn how to handle. He couldn't handle it. He couldn't, he just went crazy and couldn't handle it, okay? So what happened is he acted out. He acted out against every woman in his life, starting with the choking, with the hitting, with the threatening, with the bullying, with the hatred, with the spewing, not really wanting to express that, but being unable as an adult to comprehend what he was feeling, the undercurrent underneath of what he was feeling and not being able to express it. This was a slave in this life trying to free himself 
from the bondage of the souls who hijacked him into this fucking lifetime. Okay, he's definitely saying that. The war paint that he painted on himself. Now, you know I'm not a fan of the face tattoos. I'm really not. And he was a good looking boy as well. And the minute you start sticking that ink all over your face, I don't know, okay? Like, I'm begging you to put some kind of semi-permanent ink on your face so you can change it up. Who can commit at that age to a tattoo? Okay, anyway, that's all besides the point, and this is a mom speaking here. Okay, a mom of a son who's tattooed from head to toe. <laughs> I'm just like, uh. Okay, so anyway, what those tattoos were on his face, they are Egyptian and Roman spiritual and magical and they are bringing him into his power he was a high performing and i'm going to use the word magician i don't know what other word to use by that i mean um a call him a witch call him a uh um a warlock that's the word i was looking for not a witch which is a chick a warlock a male witch he is a warlock magician a magical warlock from Egyptian and Roman times. He was captured, his energy was captured. This was against his will in this life. Other lifetime when he tried to jump through the portal, he killed himself and that was his own actions. This lifetime they wanted him dead because he was starting to step away from from the plan, he started to see. I started to see. So he started to see things. Um, a lot of the women in his life were were enemies from a past life so it was very hard for him he is also saying and this is going to be graphic but out i go with it he wasn't necessarily a graphic kid he was kind of a um kind of a quirky quiet loud kid at the same time it's not until his emotions caught up with him that he got really like engaged in being obnoxious what he's telling me is that in order to capture him. Now, I want everybody to understand out there, you can capture a physical and you can actually capture a soul body because what you do in this dimension, whatever it is you do, there are beliefs when you set forward in those actions and those beliefs can push you through on the other side to being captured because you agreed to them here. Granted, if you are tricked or sold into it, this child was sold into this. Two lifetimes before, mother in this lifetime making decisions behind his back, double cross, X, 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 third lifetime, X, X, X is what he tells me third time, knew his life was going to end young, knew they were coming for him, couldn't stop it, but he didn't do it himself this time, basically born into it against his will. Soul came in, X, one lifetime Egyptian, X, Roman, X, American, gone, out of it. So he kind of tricked them in a way because he set them up, this is interesting, set them up to think that he was going to move in a different direction with his life here and not honor what they wanted him to, which he didn't wasn't even supposed to connect with, but he was able to see it. Okay, now that's weird. Let me just think what I'm getting here. Okay, at the end of his life, there were people doing all kinds of magic behind his back and against him. I know a lot of people out there don't actually understand that when I say it, but this is like, um, you know, black magic things, trying to manipulate the will of his soul. When he got shot, those two dummies, <laughs> those two dummies, he wasn't even afraid of them, okay? He didn't even think that was going to happen. He did think they were going to kill him, but not on that day at that time. He had awareness, but it didn't click in fast enough. Those two were being energetically manipulated. Yes, they're responsible for their actions. You're supposed to have a stronger soul than to be manipulated. His mom, his mom got what you want now, right? Got what you want. She didn't want him dead. It's not what I mean. Got what she wants. She got her status. She got her fame. She vampired it off of her son. No offense. This is what I'm being shown. I can only say what I'm being shown. So don't shoot the messenger. I'm actually being shown that. He's still angry at his mother. This carries over. 
God, I was hoping it would leave this life, like when a kid's angry at their mother, right? <laughs> anyway, he's still angry. These two were in mortal combat in this life as mother and child. And it looks so innocent because my natural instinct when somebody is murdered is to have empathy for the parents and compassion and sadness and just because to actually experience the loss of a child is devastating. So when you experience it, you, you're going to reach out to those parents, even if you have no idea what it feels like, because we all have an idea. This was orchestrated. This was a setup. This young man was taking his energy and he was being counseled on the other side by a guide. And all I can tell you, the guide that I see, I have no idea who this is. I'm flashing back in time to probably the year and a half before he was murdered. And I'm seeing a guide, um, basically just like an apparition, but in a long, looks like actually, I've got to say, it looks like somebody from the Bible who carried the tablets. I don't know if that's a past life friend or whatever, but they were working with them. And I'm being shown that. Like, I'm just being shown that. This is a Roman person. It's got to be a Roman person, right? Looks like this. This guide is somebody. He's carrying a big stone in front of me to show me who he is, but I'm not that scholarly on this, so I'm not getting it and I'm not hearing it. However, I'm seeing it. And he was being worked on. I'm talking about X was being worked on energetically in order to free himself. Remember this, even if you have bound yourself through your own actions. So let's say in a lifetime, you come in and you're like, you know what? Fuck being a good person. Fuck working hard. I'm going to go, you know, run the streets, steal, rob, rape, pillage. And I'm going to agree to do all that shit and keep doing it. And I'm going to join like a little cult that does this. I'm just wording it like this in the sideways. Anyway, let's say I agree to do that. So I step away from the God source or the God energy. I step right the fuck away from it in this life. Let's say I didn't. I'm just saying a what if. I have to cover that. I don't want them to even think. Um, so let's say the person decides to do this and they step away from the God source or the created source. All right. And they're going in a direction that's destructive and cruel and unkind and all of the things that we abhor in the society. You still can work your way back out of that bondage. Just like addiction, that is a form of bondage. If you're an addict, you understand 100% what addiction is and what it's reflective of. So that is something that's very... Um, it's something that it can be thought of as moving people from one side of the scales to the other, but it takes soul work. And we may go through several lifetimes where we are caught off guard and we don't know why this happened and we may acquiesce again. Problem is, he didn't agree to come into this woman's body, meaning he didn't agree to come through in this lifetime. That wasn't the karma. He was still over there. However, they let him loose out of jail over there so that they could use his energy over here to get what they wanted. And I'm talking harnessing power of energy, literally black magic, cult thinking behavior against this young man starting when he was young. Now, here's the graphic part that I was talking about. He is saying there are certain things that you do in order to elevate your your soul, your spiritual, your spiritual energy. And I'm going to use this word. I'm just going to say it. This, I'm going to shut him down here for a minute and explain something from my understanding. So if you are trying to get the ultimate power on the world, they don't let us see everything that goes on. We're taught only so much, even within the context of our religions and what we do in our day-to-day -day life. Like we're born, we're only given so much information because if we realized the power we had, we wouldn't be putting up with the shit. We would be able to manage things ourselves, and there'd be a full-on spiritual war right here in the physical as opposed to behind the scenes with people fighting it and a few of them, but not everybody because the information isn't revealed or we are blinded to it, okay? And it's, it can come at different times and people can wake up and express, which is what's going on now. What happens is the word, okay, we're going to use a word that everybody uses and rolls their eyes. So I'll roll my eyes first. Okay. So the eye roll, I'm going to use the word illuminate or illuminati. Where does that come from? Okay. Back in medieval times, way back, okay. In certain cultures, there were monks and men of cloth religion 
that between men and men themselves believed, these are adults, not children, believed that through the act of, I'll just use the word anal sex sodomy, that if the person, if it was done in a ritualistic way, so a spiritual way, spiritual way. Yes, I understand what you're all thinking. And I know you're all a rose rolling your eyes right now. If it's done in a spiritual way, not for the purpose of sex, but for the purpose of breaking through the seal, which is basically located like up your rear. It sounds really weird. I'm talking about an energy seal up the back side of the body, which they believe opens the third eye. Now, personally, I'd rather go about it in other ways. <laughs> I'm not interested in that way, but this is part of this cult ritual that we see running rampant in our society now with the childhood sexual abuse. What I'm being told by him is that when he was put into these situations as a child where he would be locked up, jailed, um, reform school, reform houses, religious teachings, schools where boys go over there and they live by themselves and certain people are in charge of them, these practices were being utilized on his body. And I'm sure not for the spiritual sense of it, if there is such a thing, it was being utilized basically by sexually deviant people kind of um, abusing a young man. That abuse is what split the energy with him and he started to recognize it. This is what he was doing. He was basically starting to recognize that he had been in the wrong direction and he was changing his direction. He wasn't gonna try to jump through a portal. He was going to stick it out in this life until he was taken out and murdered. That's not on him, so his soul is partially free now. He is still working is what he tells me on the other side and he is still focused. And people feel like he's alive because his energy is very vibrant and resonating here because these fuckers on this side, these are his words, not mine, hold his energy kind of bound here and he's trying to break free. So it's like, um, okay, it's very, he's giving me an analogy. It's very much like when you have a fence around your 50 acre property and you have this big ass fence and you have a kid and your kid toddles outside. And, and so there's a fence, the first 10 feet. And the kid gets a bit older, you move the fence back another 10, you move it forward, I mean, so the kid can get farther another 20 feet and so on till the property line, but there's still a fence around the property line. Just because the kid can't see it when he's little doesn't mean it's not there holding him tied. He's telling me energetically, they are doing shit on this side to tie his energy here so the focus is still on him. But he that's why he's so present and so close. People think he's alive because he's literally sitting like right outside the door. I'm speaking energetically. This is what I'm seeing. Um, he does tell me that the entire family is involved in this kind of behavior and it is ritualistic right now. So it is no surprise and no shock that he was gunned down. It's no surprise and no shock that we're not really hearing about anything else. And he's talking about his emotional energy and saying, Sometimes people are born on this planet because they know the soul knows it doesn't want to be here. It's like, what the fuck am I doing here? It's about energy vampires or, or, and I use the word vampire as in stealing energy. When you steal your neighbor's cable, remember back in the seventies and eighties, people used to hook their cable up or their phones. <laughs> That's stealing energy. That's being a cable vampire. Do you get the point? Like it's, this is what's going on. This is what I'm seeing with this kid. Everything he did to himself and the women in his life that he had these problems with. And he says, my mother's tricky. She's tricky. Okay. This is what he's saying. Tricky. Their real relationship was tricky. Understand too, a woman can birth four, five, six, seven kids, whatever. And she can have different interactions and relationships with every single one because the experiences are different. This kid wasn't even supposed to be here. Got pulled into this life, got tricked, got, got, Hmm. Everything that you do here and now in the present is also being done and reverberating on the other side. And if your energy is focused on things that are murder, homicide, rap money, uh, do what you got to do to get everything material, agree to shit you don't want to do, observe stuff you don't want to do, it 
reverberates back and forth. And what they're really doing when they're doing that is they are stealing energy. You got to start thinking of human beings in terms of megawattage light sources, light being energy. Okay. So we have energy. Some of us are not very, um, open energetically. So you can see it with the eyes on people when you look at them and they're in a different state of being. So the eyes may be looking more sleepy or not really awake. And then you can see people with bright eyes. And if you look close enough and you look at the sold out people, you can see the people with the dark eyes. He was being sold out, but he was sold in too. Sold out is being a soul slave for negative energy that will keep you coming back into lifetime after lifetime after lifetime doing bullshit instead of elevating your soul. But it is a trick. You don't have to buy into it and you can redeem yourself or elevate your energy above it to free yourself. As in women got the right to vote. We freed ourselves. Okay. So you can free yourself. Oh my God. And free yourself from cooking every night just saying. Okay. So we freed ourselves. Souls can free themselves. He's trying to do that, but they've got him on an, he's kind of showing it, um, showing me like he's like a balloon on a string still. So his energy is bound. They bound his energy, crossing him out. And that's an Egyptian thing. So the family practices some kind of Egyptian magic or some kind of Egyptian prayer or some kind of something. This is Egyptian. That's what I'm seeing. And that's what I have on X my nickname for XXX Tentacion. He's trying to get me to say it again and I can't say it. So I apologize. Anyway, this is my first video on him because I actually have a client right now and must go. Um, so thank you. And once again, my name is Sloan from sloanbella.com.